Our president of uh, First Aid uh, Center uh, in uh, Slovenia Red Cross, Jasmar. Predsednik Slovačkega Rdičega križa, smo ga povabili, da se zdaj tukaj. Please, dear friends, sit here. Please, 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 yes, yes. Yes, I will be here, yes. Well, yeah, I'm brand new. Brand new. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> here are uh, our... Uh, I, I have to learn all the time. Z magistrem Slovetom, s verjetem poznavljanje zdravstvene fakultete, sprednjavlja se me je dobroletni naš sodelovec, bi rekla, tako v stihalo centru za prvo pomoč, tudi v zvezi z srbjom doktrino, prvo pomoč, tudi v kadela. Doktor Jasperjeva? Tukaj so pa še predstavniki iz Švicarskega rdečega križa. Our president of Slovenia Red Cross, Dr. Kemer in kolegi iz Hrvaške. Danes dolazi primarjo svojeg predsednika. A jaz sem pač bil vsaj za sta profesor Kovarov vsaj vredi. To exchange um, experiences orally, sometimes, unfortunately, learning through mistakes. So I deeply feel what you feel when you face an acute event, an emergency situation. I think nobody can understand what somebody who is involved in treating emergency case is experiences at that moment. And by the way, not all critical cases are happening in hospitals. They are happening outside. And the spread of knowledge, and you, and you are doing this, the spread of knowledge among lay people in society is more than important. So I am quite sure that this is one of the events, this uh, workshop symposium, which will perhaps add some small new knowledge or experience, exchange of experiences. So I wish you good work. I wish you also good work tomorrow during <coughs> all other official events of uh, face. And please do find some means or hours to enjoy also this city. Thank you. Further steps in uh, operating theater, intensive care unit, and to find a medical rehabilitation. And uh, in, we have six chapters. First one is initial resuscitation and prevention of further bleeding on the site of the accident, diagnosis and monitoring of possible bleeding, diagnosis and monitoring of bleeding uh, already in hands of uh, uh, professionals in the resuscitating room and the, in the uh, op operating theater. And uh, after that, parallel care of anesthesiologists and, in, and intensive care medicine for tissue oxygenation, type of fluid, and temperature management. As we know, the lateral triad uh, kills our patients. The lateral triad is a uh, triad sorry, of uh, hypothermia, as you know, uh, implementation of uh, quality assurance programs with the recommendation that each uh, med uh, health unit should have its own protocols and uh, written, pre written protocols and assessment of reading control and outcomes. So the, aim, the aims of the guideline to provide better understanding of the pathophysiology of the cerebral bleeding patient following traumatic injury to provide treatment guidance for the clinician, to highlight areas in which further research is urgently required, and to ensure uniform 
we, there, you have time about six hours to do some invasive <coughs> procedure to reinstate the blood flow in the coronary arteries. So we see it, there is a time pressure for the patients to be treated, and th there is also a time pressure on the trauma, I mean, on the medical emergency teams to perform a lot of these procedures which will enable uh, patients to go on with their lives and uh, be members of the society because it's not only everything is not only in survival it's, it's also important that these persons are able to function as before now uh, I will only go briefly through uh, the bleeding it is considered that the you see, if there is no oxygen flow or oxygen uh, availability in the brain, neurons start to die for minutes. Do this emergency team arrive in time? This is the last data for the first half of the year for Indiana, for our one of very good emergency medical teams. The time, average arrival time, for the emergency medical team in Ljubljana, in the urban area, is more than 11 minutes. We are way over the 4 minutes. And it, if you are talking not about the city itself, but the outskirts, it is nearly 14 minutes to start some... The main reasons that people do not approach and do nothing, it's fear. Fear of infection, <coughs> fear of getting something wrong, and fear of legal implications. So what is the cure for that fear? It's education and training. That's what we do at Red Cross. So who do we want to train? Who do we want to educate? The answer would be everyone. But we target specific groups, and specific groups are family members of high-risk patients. Then it's high-risk population. The populations, when there's uh, the most uh, possible that something will go wrong, for example, a heart attack, and the least amount of people who will help them and all school children it, because all school children and their professors are multipliers they come home, they tell their siblings, they tell their parents, they, they tell their grandparents they tell everyone and they spread the knowledge that we taught them and um, in the research it said that they only need two hours per year to learn CPR and the best phase to begin is the age of 12. But we can start teaching first age to uh, elementary school. Yes, all the basic stuff we can teach them. They are eager to teach before they reach puberty. They want to learn and they remember better than me. So how do we do it? Of course, in structure-led training is still the most popular version of training. Hopefully we do it. There are two uh, things we have to consider. We forget and guidelines change. So CPR skills decay in three to six months. AED skills retain a, bit, a little longer. So optimal intervals are not known, but frequent low dose training can be beneficial because if you didn't come to on phase 2016, in Ljubljana, in Slovenia, it will not be so perfect. <laughs> <laughs>